Hey everyone, I just want to take a second to explain to you uh, how to do a post-mortem interval calculation for um, the life cycle of a blowfly. And I do want to start by saying that this is just an example of a of a life cycle of a blowfly. Not all blowflies have the same um, time frame for each window between the phases, but uh, for our purposes in class, this is the one that we're gonna use just to stay consistent with our calculations. Uh, also, I wanna tell you that each one of these time frames only represents the hours from one stage to another. So this 23 hours only talks about the time that it takes for an egg to turn into a first instar, 27 hours to turn from first instar to second instar, and so forth, okay? So if you come upon a decomposing body, and you find, say for example, first instar and second instar larvae, okay? Well, we're gonna look and see what that means for our post-mortem interval or our time since death, okay? So, we know that it takes 23 hours for an egg to turn into first instar larvae. So that is the beginning of our window of when the person could have died, okay? But it could be all the way up to this time frame because there are some second instar larvae that we found on the body. So what you're gonna do is add 23 hours plus 27 hours, and that's gonna give you 50 hours. So what we're saying is that it could have been as soon ago as 23 hours, but it may have been as long ago as 50 hours because we found both first in star and second in star, okay? Now, if you were an investigator and you found some second in star, you could pretty much guess that we're gonna be more along this area of development because it's not likely that right at 23 hours we already have second and star larvae. But because this is an interval, post-mortem interval, we're gonna go ahead and give an interval of time or a window of time, okay? Let's do another one. Let's say that you find um, third and star and pupae, okay? Third and star and pupae, okay? So we're gonna take the time that it took for the blowfly to develop to a third instar, which means that we have to add the egg to first instar stage, plus the first star instar to second instar stage, plus the second instar to third instar stage, okay? So 23 plus 27 plus 22, that's gonna give us 72 hours, and that's as soon ago as it could have been to give us third instar larvae. All right. However, it could be as long ago as all of this, plus the time that it takes to become a pupa, because we do have some pupae that are present at the body. So then we're going to take 72 hours, because it took us from here to here to here, to get 72 hours plus this window of time, 130 hours, and that's going to give us 202 hours. So that's the window of time that the person could have died, okay? Now, one other consideration, of course, is that when these blowflies shed their outer cuticles um, and when they pupate, they leave these pupa casings. So investigators or entomologists are going to look for those pupa casings, and that would help them to know that they've already been through this whole life cycle one time, okay? And we know that it takes 24 hours for a blowfly to be ready to lay eggs again, okay? So um, if you already saw pupa casings there, we could add all of this together plus whatever else you find there. So if you see pupa casings plus eggs there, it would be this whole thing added together plus this first little window of time. Uh, but generally we're gonna stick to, like on quizzes and tests, we're gonna be talking about we found first in star and second in star or second in star and third in star, and then you'll give me that interval of time. I hope this was helpful.